it was somewhere in the middle of the day when we just we found this miracle of a golden frog and he was totally oblivious to the fact that most of the people in the world thought he was totally extinct. It's sort of a misconception that frogs only say ribbit. You'll hear all kinds of sounds like they sound like a, a bleeding goat or a quacking duck and some of them actually sound like um, machines or something out of a space movie. They have this just incredible ability to produce the sound and also to project it um, across the rainforest stream in order to, to find a mate. So sometimes you'll be walking along the stream and it's just deafening and feels like it'll almost give you a headache, but it's just so wonderful to be in such a, a vibrant and very alive and loud location. It's really hard to pick a favorite. There's, I like so many of them for different reasons. It's really hard to top the golden frogs. They're just elegant and stunning. They actually walk instead of hop. And they're really, really a beautiful species. That's why they're the national animal of Panama. They're just that stunning. Now on Golden Frog Day, which is a national holiday in Panama on August 14th, there's an entire week of activities to celebrate frogs. There's parades where all the kids dress up like golden frogs and there's the golden frog king and queen. It's such a fun experience as a scientist and somebody who loves frogs to be in a place where everyone is celebrating it and talking about it and, and thinking about what it means to potentially lose those species. For a long time, there was, there was a period when the assumption was that the golden frogs had gone, had gone extinct. They were no longer around. Chytridium mycosis is an infectious disease. It's caused by a fungus. And this particular fungus has been uh, making frogs around the entire world very, very sick. And in many cases, it has been um, completely lethal, meaning that it's killing a lot of different um, frog species. And this is true um, across the whole planet. So um, although people may not realize it, but there's lots of amphibians that are moved around the world for the pet trade, for food, um, for lots of different reasons. And so it's probably been introduced across the world um, by humans. You know, there was a time period when it was, it was really quiet. Like if you went out on the stream, you didn't hear those calls. You didn't, you didn't see the frogs in your headlamp. It was just silent and it was, it was hard. It was so devastating to watch that and to have that happen um, and feeling completely helpless. It's hard to describe the feeling of expecting that the animals that you were just recently holding in your hand, that that entire species could go extinct. And then I remember thinking, like kicking myself, like, why didn't I take out my camera? Why didn't I document that? more thoroughly. I should have done so many things differently before the disease arrived. And I just couldn't stop thinking about that. Like, what if that was the last chance any human had of taking that frog's picture? And I just had this sinking feeling like that might have been the only opportunity and I missed it. And I'd always been kind of haunted by this idea that all of the frog species that were so important to me in my life, that they were just gone. And it wasn't entirely clear that anybody was out looking for them. Um, and so we, you know, we put together a few small grants. We um, <laughs> took out some money of our own from personal funds and we went back down there. And we went back out to the streams. And at first, it was still pretty sad, you know, it, it was, I remember the first days being pretty disheartened because it's still really quiet. And it was still very clear that the, the frogs were not there in the numbers that they were before. But we didn't give up, so we, we kept working. It was weeks, weeks and almost two months that we were working so hard um, in the rain and the mud, getting bug bitten, and, and sort of coming up empty-handed, you know, so, and that can be really 
um, hard to keep going. It's hard to keep your motivation when you're not finding those animals. Um, and then it was sort of towards the end of the trip when we went to one area where we knew there used to be golden frogs. It was somewhere in the middle of the day when we just, we found this miracle of a golden frog sitting on a mossy rock. And he had, he, had, he was totally oblivious to the fact that most of the people in the world thought he was totally extinct and he was gorgeous you know he had the bright yellow color and then i remember he that particular individual had a lot of black markings on him and he was you know healthy and happy and just doing his ordinary frog thing and it was just like an explosion of excitement <laughs> right there on the on the stream I think we danced a little jig. We, you know, were absolutely jubilant. It was a moment of, you know, if if I thought I didn't take enough photographs before, that frog has more pictures of him than you can imagine. <laughs> you can say like, okay, there's hope. And we know that if there's one, there's surely more out there. And it's just a matter of continuing our search to find them and understand how they survived. And that's directed my research ever since. I think we all went home feeling totally changed, right? There was a general thought that we were kind of wasting our time and chasing ghosts. I think it made me recalibrate some of what I understand about the world and some of these remarkable species that we tend to take for granted and think that they will always be there. Things have not returned to the way they were before the disease emerged, right? You know, there are the individual frogs in captivity that might well be the last of their species. That's, that's a whole new level of loss that that we may not even fully understand, ever. At this point in time, I think we have to fight like hell to protect these places and to protect these species. One of my colleagues and I, when we would work on amphibians back when um, we were very young, there would be times when you literally couldn't walk along the stream without nearly stepping on a frog that was hopping out from under your shoe. The idea that we could sit in one location and literally be surrounded by frogs with them jumping on our boots and on our notebooks and just behind us and in front of us, like, I would love to have that experience again. Um, and if, 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 that, if that doesn't happen in my lifetime, but that we see that it may happen down the road, you know, then, then I, will be, I will feel very grateful for that.